Hey everybody, so in this lab, the beanbag isotopes lab, we reviewed the concepts related to the quiz nuclide notation. An isotope is an atom which has different numbers of neutrons but the same number of protons as another atom. So if the number of neutrons are different, the mass is different, but if the protons are the same, then it's always the same kind of atom. So oxygen always has eight protons, for example, but it can have eight neutrons or it can have nine neutrons and the masses would be different. This is the idea that you are exploring when doing this lab. In this lab, you're given different beans. So you're investigating the bean atom and the beans that we used were black beans pinto beans and navy beans and you got a mixture of these different amounts of beans uh, in a bag and what you had to do you had to sort them into each kind of bean count them and weigh them and that allowed you to calculate their uh, their average mass and their percent abundance so here's some sample data that i put down there's uh, under the bean type you write black Pinto and Navy. Under the number of beans, I wrote 50, 25, and 100. And under the total mass of the bean atoms, I wrote 20.6 grams, 12.8 grams, and 38.7 grams. Now these are made up numbers, but you actually did this. You sorted the beans, you counted them, and then you weighed them. And now in our data table, you had to do some calculations. So I'm gonna write the bean types again black, pinto, and navy. And then you calculate the average mass of each bean. So you take the mass and divide by the number of bean atoms for each type of atom. So I have my handy dandy computer calculator here. And so I do 20.6 divided by 50. And I get 0.412. average mass of the black beans and then I'm going to do 12.8 divided by 25 and I get 0 And then I'm going to do my navy, 38.7 divided by 100. And I can do that in my head because just move the decimal point over two times. So it's 0.387 grams. And now I have to calculate the percent abundance. So the way you calculate percent abundance is to take the number of each bean and divide by the total beans. So in this case, you would for the black beans, you would take 50, which is the number of black beans you had, and then divide by the total number of beans. So you would add up all these numbers together. And in that case, it would be 175. So you do 50 divided by 175, and you would get the percentage by multiplying that by 100. So it would be 28.57%. 28.57%. And you do the same thing for the other ones. 25 divided by 175 for the pinto beans. So that would be 14.29%. And then for the last one, you do 100 divided by 175 for the navy beans. 57.9%. And if you add up all those numbers together, you'd get a number very close to 100%. And there was an equation given on the lab, which says that you can find the average atomic mass of a certain atom by taking the 
average mass of each isotope and multiplying it times the percent abundance of each isotope. So you do this for each one and you add them all together. Right, so you do the first one, 0 0.412 times 28.57, 0 0.512 times 14.29% and 0.387 times 57.14 and you get the average atomic mass of the beam isotope. So I'm going to write that out for you. So let's write it out. The bean average atomic mass is equal to 0 0.412 grams times 0 0.2857 plus 0.512 for the pinto beans times 14 sorry 0.41129 percent per action right you to turn a percent into a decimal you got to divide by 100 plus for the navy bean 0.387 times 0 0.5714. So, so I'm going to do the calculations on my calculator on the side rather than show it to you on the screen, but you can type it in. It is 0 0.412 times 0 0.2857 is 0 0.118 grams with the rounding. And it's only three sig figs because 0 0.412 is three sig figs. 0.512 times 0 0.4129 is 0 0.0732 grams, again with three sig figs, and then 0 0.387 times 0 0.5714 is 0 0.221 grams. And now when you add all that together, 0 0.221 plus 0 0.0732 plus 0 0.118, just did that in reverse, sorry if that confused you. It's 0 0.412 grams. Now the reason it's not 0 0.4122 is because when you uh, see, when you add and subtract, you see that this has three decimal places and that has three decimal places. So the answer has to have three decimal places. This has four decimal places. It's the lower number. Those of you who did the sig fig math quiz realize that when you add and subtract, you look at the lower number of decimal places rather than sig figs. And there's your answer for the average atomic mass of the bean atom. Similarly, we can do this with real atoms, not just bean atoms. So we can calculate the average atomic mass of magnesium. So the average atomic mass of magnesium is the mass of the first one, magnesium 24 is 24.0 AMUs times 79%, which is 0 0.790. And then you multiply that times 25, magnesium 25, which is 25.0 atomic mass units, times 10%, which is 0 0.100, plus magnesium 26, which is 26.0 AMUs, times 0 0.110. And now you do the math on that. So it's 24 times 0 0.790, and that's 18, and that is 19.0 with rounding, 19.0 AMUs. And then you do 25 times 0 0.1, that's 2.50 AMUs. And then 26 times 0.11, and that's 2.86 AMUs. So you, then you add those up, 19 plus 2.5 plus 2.86, and you get 24.4 AMUs. 
And that kind of makes sense if you see that the 24.4 is in between the 24, the 25, and the 26. And because 79% of them are 24, it's going to be closer to that answer. It's like a weighted average, like your grade. And the last question on here. Explain why the atomic mass of copper is not exactly equal to 64. Midway between the mass numbers of copper 63 and 65. So, what they're saying here is there's only two isotopes, 63 and 65. So if the average was perfectly 50% of this and 50% of that, the average would be 64. But it's not. It's not equal to 64. If we take a look at our periodic table here, we see that copper has a mass of 63.55. They want you to explain why is it 63.55 and not 64? Well, it's not 50-50, right? You have to think about which one is more. Well, 63.55, what is it closer to? It's closer to 63. That means there's more of this one and less of this one. It shifts it. Just like your homework is worth a very small percentage of your grade. So if you don't do homework, it brings your grade down a little bit. Where if you do a lot of homework, it only brings your grade up a little bit. So really the key is to doing the work in the category that's more, right? That's how you raise your grade, right? Summative and the formative. Well, in this case, if you want the average to be 63.55, you want to make this one more, right? So this is more like, this is probably more like 75% and this is 25% since the average is 63.55. So you have, the answer is that you have more copper 63 isotope and less of the copper 65 isotope. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how isotopes work and how you use the beanbag lab to, to do the isotope calculations. Thanks and have a good day.